Often courts seem reluctant to follow where logic and general principles would lead them. Barber v. Superior Court is one such case. It illustrates how the act-omission distinction can be manipulated to reach a result. The decedent in Barber was a medical patient in a coma and diagnosed to be in a permanent vegetative state. After consulting the patient's family, the defendant physicians disconnected the patient from the respirator that was enabling him to breathe. The patient, however, did not stop breathing. The defendants then disconnected the patient from his only source of hydration and nutrition. This caused the patient to die. The doctors were charged with murder and conspiracy to murder. The court dismissed the prosecution on the ground that no act of the defendants was alleged to have caused the patient's death. The cause of death was the physician's omission to continue treatment. The state of California had therefore to prove that the defendants had a duty to continue treating the patient. The doctors are easy to sympathize with. No jury would be likely to convict. But the facts of the case were somewhat inconvenient. Rather than simply fail to renew the patient's IV fluids, the defendants had caused them to be removed. If anyone else had done this, for example, if a relative of the decedent had ripped the tubes out to hasten getting a testamentary bequest, the case would surely go to the jury. So if pulling the plug is an act, there's no question of legal duty. But if it's an omission, there is. Which is it? Despite the fact that the defendants were in control of the life support apparatuses, and had ordered them to be disconnected, the court held that their conduct amounted to an omission. The prosecution has to do more than to show that the intentional removal of the patient's tubes caused his death. The conduct was an omission, and therefore the prosecution had to show that the defendants had a legal duty to act to avoid the result. The court then held, as a matter of law, that the defendants had no legal duty to continue futile treatment. Futile, not in the sense that continued intubation would not prolong the patient's life. Futile in the sense that it would. The patient might have lived for years or even decades, but most probably in a persistent vegetative state. This could not reasonably benefit the patient. Could it? Might the patient have wanted to stay alive? A prolonged vegetative state might not seem worse than death for the one in it. In the absence of an advanced medical directive executed by the patient himself, who can say? Have you executed an advanced medical directive? If not, I urge you to think about doing so not something you should omit.